In order for you to let Blender work in a certain way, you can go into Edit and then you can go to Preferences where you can access different options right here. So on the top, you can see that there's interface right here and you can see that the resolution scale right now is set to 1. But if I were to click and drag it, you can see that everything becomes larger. So for some reason, if your screen is too small and the letters are hard to actually read it, you can readjust this out just like this over here. You can also click on it and type it. Let's say, for example, you want to scale it to 1 by 2, 5 of the times right here. You can just go ahead and then change that out just like that. And then over here, there are other options. So you can go around with the line width right here. You can go for auto, thick to see how the width of the line actually behaves just like this. So you can go around into auto or anything you want. There's developers extra as well. So if you are a programmer, you can turn this on as well. And there are other things like there's Python tool tips to show you Python uh, details of or how the coding is done for uh, Blender. So if you are a programmer, then this is a very uh, a good feature which lets you customize Blender in the way you want as this is an open source software. So you can also go over here and there's different options like there's translations. You can choose different languages right here like Spanish and so forth. And the entire interface changes out just like this. So you can just go around and then I'm going to choose English again right here. And then you can see that it changes that out. Over here in themes, there are different presets that you can select. For example, you want to go for dark. This is the dark mode, you can go to Blender Light to have a light theme right here. You can go for different sort of options as you can see like white which is print friendly and there are different options like Modo and so forth which mimics the color scheme of other softwares like Maya and so forth as well. So this looks more like Maya viewport now. But I'm just going to go around and stick to Blender Dark which is the default view right here. You can also go around into individual options right here and change out the color. So if you want to change out the color of the text right here, make it like blue or so forth, you can go around and do that as well. Selection, you can change the selection and so forth and change this out uh, in the way you like. But there are a lot of tools, so uh, it's not going to be possible to cover them uh, each uh, one by one in this single video. So if I were to go over here on to viewport, there are different things like there's the gizmo size that you can work around with. So if you were to actually select this, uh, what you see here is the gizmo. So if I were to go around into edit and preferences and over here I can increase and decrease the gizmo size and then I can change around the preview size and other options as you can see. I can also go around and turn off the filters right here to increase and decrease the quality of the anti-aliasing that happens over here on textures. Since we don't have textures we don't really have much things over here. And in lights, you can see that there's different options where you can add, add in SDRI lights and so forth. And in editing, you have different options like this uh, data, 3D cursor and so forth. So this is something we'll, we will explore as we progress through the lessons as well. And in animation, you can see that there's the minimum grid spacing that you can actually go around. And here you can see that as I move this around, it increases and decreases the value right here. And over here, the add-ons is like plugins, uh, which you can install. So there are different add-ons, as you can see, which you can turn on and off right here according to what you need. For example, you want the uh, interface 3D viewport, pie menus or something like that. You can just turn these on and it'll behave accordingly. So over here in input, you can see that this is the minimum double click speed that needs to be. You can increase and decrease these out as well. So you can specifically customize this software uh, in the way you want. You can also go to navigation right here and then there's even key maps right here which you can change out. You can go to system and then in system if there's any like let's say for example supported GPUs right here it'll be displayed out right here. So you can just turn them on for a faster performance as well. There's other settings that you can apply in detail as well. So there's save and load feature right here. So there's the save prompt that happens while you're actually working with the file and so forth. Save versions, recent file, and then you can also enable and disable the auto save feature. And then over here, you can set the file parts for the fonts, for the render and even applications as you can see. So you can let the software behave the way you want just like that. And that is how you can uh, use Blender preferences to customize the software in the way you want. So if you guys learned something as always, and as always, please like, comment, share, and subscribe.